Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can handle the uploading of a file or files to a Node.js server using Express using the Malta NPM package. Now a nice thing about this package is in addition to the file or files that you are handling, you can also handle additional form data on the same post request. So as you can see on the front end, I've already set up a simple form here with two text inputs and also a file input option. And if we take a look at the underlying markup, you see two inputs of type text and the third one is of type file. And I'm including the multiple attribute here. So the user can select one or multiple files. So when the user clicks the button of type submit on this form, it's going to trigger this event listener of type submit. And this is going to, first of all, prevent HTML from automatically submitting the form. So we're handling the form submission in JavaScript. Next, I'm selecting all of the inputs here, and then I'm creating a new form data object. I'm appending the values of first name and last name to the form data object. And then for the files, the files are stored in an array. So they are available on the file input on the files property, and I'm looping through them by their length, and I'm appending each one of those files to the form data object. So we're going to end up with a form data object that contains two text inputs, and also a number of files determined by the number that the user decides to upload. If you want to view the contents of the form data object before it's sent to the server, then you need to use an iterative method to get at that. So you can just console log form data, spreading it in one by one. Now, if I fill in this form, so I will select two images from file, open the console, and when I hit submit, you can see at the contents that we're trying to then to the server has been logged there. We're getting some errors because the server doesn't actually exist yet. But the point in this exercise is that you can see what is contained in the form data object. So if I open up this second file here, you can see that it's got a reference name of files. And the second element in the array is the file itself. Notice here that both files have a reference of files. That's because in the loop, where we are attaching them to the form data object, use the same reference. So this reference name is going to be important because on the server side, we're going to use this reference name to access the files as they come in. Now, finally, on the front end, I'm making a post request to port 5000 forward slash uploads. So we're going to be creating that server in a moment. The body of the post request is form data. So the data that we just saw in the console log and then I'm handling the response from the server in the normal way that you would for a server that is sending back a JSON file. So that is it for the front end. Now on the server side, so I've already created a subfolder server here with server.js. And inside here, I've already got a basic server setup. I'm starting by importing Express Malta, which is the package we're going to be using to actually pass the file or files and form data, and finally optionally cause. So what this allows me to do is to accept requests from any IP or all paths so that I don't get any cause errors. So you can initialize it on all paths by calling cause inside of app.use after you have initialized express. And then the one path I have here that supports a post request is forward slash uploads. And at the moment it's just logging the request to the console and the app is running on port 5000. So if we take a look back at the front end, you see that on localhost, so this is the IP for localhost on port 5000, we're making our fetch post request to the uploads path. So that corresponds to what I've set up here. Now, even though I'm importing these three packages at the top of my script, you'll notice that in the server folder, there is as of yet, no node project there. So let's create a new node project there now. So first of all, I need to cd 
into the server folder. So I can just drag and drop that as a shortcut. Then to create a new node project using the ordinary defaults, npm init or flag y. And after that, I want to install those three packages from npm. So that is express, cause, and finally, Malta. So after that is complete, we will see a package.json file, and it has these three packages now listed as dependencies for this project. So let's go ahead and start using Malta now. So for this first example, I'm going to start using it with some minimal option settings. So the minimal amount of information that you need to specify is a destination where you want the files that are uploaded to be saved. So in this case, I'm going to set it to the current directory name plus, and I'm going to create this folder in a moment, a folder called uploads here. Then you want to save the return value of this so that you can then pass it in to the path where you want to intercept the request. So that is the way that Malta works. It intercepts the files in the request for you. So in between the specification of the path and the callback function, you are going to want to call array on the uploads reference and inside there pass in the reference name for the files that you gave them in the form data object on the front end. So in this case, it was files, and this loop gave the same reference to all of the files. So the files have that same reference name. Now I need to create the new folder that I'm referring to inside of server. So call it uploads. So now that we've passed in Malta as middleware here, using these specifications, what we can do is to access the body of the request. So that's going to give us any form data and also files. And to the front end, I'll send back a JSON response saying that the status of this request is files received. Okay, so hopefully now this is working. I will spin up the server by calling node server. It's up and running on port 5000. Now, if I go into the front end and complete the form, I'll upload two images here. Hit submit. So now we're getting the JSON response back with files received. And if we take a look in the console log for the server, we have available to us both the form field values and also in an array of objects, some information about the files that have been uploaded. And if we take a look inside the uploads folder, they should then be there. So you can't actually access them in the editor, but if we reveal them in File Explorer, so there's a present no extension for these files, but I can prove that they are indeed the images that I selected. If I just drag and drop one into an image editor here, you can see that these images definitely exist. So let's go back to the server now and I'll show you how you can customize the file name under which uploads are stored. So this is really the quick and easy way to get up and running, saving the file uploads somewhere. But if you want to specify more options, then what you want to do is to create a storage property on the options object, and we'll be setting that to the value of storage. So we'll be creating a reference to that up here, and you specify those options on storage, passing in here an options object. The first property set here is destination. So this is going to be similar to last time. So it's going to be the same destination, but now you have more parameters available to you. So you can use the request or the file itself. But what we're going to be doing here is simply calling callback. 
So if there's an error, it's expecting that to be in the first position. So we set that to null. And in the second position, that's where we set the directory. So again, it's going to be directory name plus uploads. And now the next property that I'm going to set is going to determine the file name under which uploaded files are saved. So again, this accepts a function in which you have the request available file. So this is information about the file, not the file itself. And again, a callback parameter where you want to pass in null in the first argument position. So in the second argument position, you can specify the name under which uploaded files will be saved. So for example, you can save them under their original name under which they were uploaded. So that would also include their extension. So let's see if this is working now. Just fill in the form once more and submit. So files received. Now on the server side, you see the console log output. So we're getting again the information. You can see here the original name property. You could use other properties here to help determine the file name. And then inside the uploads folder, you see now we've got image one and image two, and they're recognized as JPEG files. Now, obviously, this tutorial has been about uploading files, but you can actually use Malta just to pass the text on the incoming form data. So you can do that by specifying uploads none and no argument is necessary in there. So I'll start the server again. And this time I'll just send some text. And you see on the server side, you get John and Doe there undefined for the second console log because there is no file available there. So you'd probably want to delete the console log there because it's no longer necessary. And also to change this to something like form data received. So that is it for this tutorial on how you can handle file uploads to a node server running with Express using the Malta package. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel.